jumps overlapping action. As you probably know, overlapping action is one of the principles of animation. Overlapping action is any secondary motion that occurs on top of the primary motion. For example, if a character is jumping, then the primary motion would be the jump itself. The motion of the arms and the head would be what I'd call active secondary motions. There are also passive secondary motions, such as the drag of the clothing, hair, and so forth. Now, the timing of the overlapping actions may or may not have the similar timing that matches the timing of the primary motion. Passive overlapping actions, like follow through and drag, are likely to be synchronized with the primary motion. On the other hand, Active overlapping actions may also be synchronized, especially if they're in support of the primary motion, but not necessarily. A good example of an active secondary motion that supports the primary motion is swinging the arms in a jump. It turns out that you jump significantly higher if you swing your arms as you're taking off. Now, swinging of the arms has two related effects. First, by swinging the arms upward, you exert more force on the ground, and so there's a larger reaction force pushing you upward. Second, at takeoff, your center of gravity is higher off the ground. This is because your center of gravity shifts upward within your torso when your arms are raised. The correct way to swing the arms when jumping is to swing them while the feet are still in contact with the ground. This video shows the correct way to swing the arms in a jump. The incorrect way to animate the arm swing in a jump is to swing the arms after the character has already left the ground. Let's see what happens if you try to jump in this fashion. You see that it's very unnatural and highly awkward. I strongly recommend that you try it yourself so that you can feel what it's like. Once you experience the effect of doing it wrong, you'll never forget to match the arm swing with the leg push when animating a jump. If you throw your arms upward after you've left the ground, then you shift your center of gravity to a higher position in your torso. However, the center of gravity is the same distance from the ground, so basically that means that you throw your body downward. Moving the arms and legs in the air shifts the center of gravity within the body, but does not raise or lower the center of gravity from the ground. Long jumpers do move their arms and legs, not to gain height, but to control the rotation of their body so as to land feet first. There's another video that discusses this topic in more depth by analyzing mid-air somersaults and twists. Swinging the arms is an example of an active overlapping action. The movements of hair, clothing, and things like that are passive overlapping actions. Now, an important effect for passive overlapping actions is weight gain and weight loss. Basically, whenever an object is accelerating with gravity, there's a weight loss. And when an object is accelerating against gravity, there's a weight gain. For example, falling and speeding up is going with gravity. So in that case, there's a weight loss. Let's look at weight gain and loss in a jump. In this case, I'm going to jump and measure weight gain or weight loss using a force plate. I'm wearing a hula skirt, a headpiece, a necklace, and a wig to show you passive overlapping actions during that jump. 
To start, I lose weight dropping into the crouch. Before reaching the bottom of the crouch, I start slowing down and gain weight. Then I start pushing upward and gain more weight. When I'm in the air, I lose weight. In fact, I'm weightless both on the way up to the apex and back down. While I'm in the air, everything is very light and flouncy. And you especially see this in the necklace that I'm wearing. But once my feet touch the ground and I slow to a stop, I gain weight again. Here's the data from the force plate. When I step on the plate, it registers my normal weight. As I drop into the crouch, the weight dips and then comes back up. The weight continues going up as I'm rising from the crouch until the takeoff. As I'm in the air, my weight is zero, but when I land, the weight shoots way up. Finally, after I return to a neutral standing pose, my weight returns to normal. Now it's true that when I'm in the air, my feet are not in contact with the force plate. However, even if the plate was glued to my shoes, it would still register zero weight while I'm in the air. So in summary, overlapping action is any secondary motion occurring with the primary motion. Active overlapping actions may be timed to be in support of the primary action. An example is swinging the arms to increase the height of a jump, and that's done while the feet are on the ground. Passive overlapping actions in a jump are affected by weight gain and weight loss. Weight gain occurs when the motion goes against gravity, while weight loss occurs when the motion goes with gravity, most importantly, weightlessness occurs while the character is in the air. Understanding this weight gain and loss is important in animating character effects such as hair, clothing, uh, so forth in a jump. Well, hopefully that all made sense. I do suggest that you study reference because passive overlapping action can be tricky. Just remember what I showed you about weight gain and loss and keep an eye out for that effect. Good luck.